France, well known for fine cuisine, is actually known in foodie circles for the best cuisine in the world. The word filet mignon is a French word that is usually referred to pork. Filet mignon is a cut of beef also known as tenderloin, the most tender cut of beef. You can find filet mignon on menus in just about every restaurant in America. Today, I will share my secret to making a great filet mignon. I'm hungry just thinking about it. Let's stop talking. Let's scrub out. We've got our nice cut of filet mignon right here. We also have some asparagus. We've got some cream cheese bowl with our grits in it, a water and milk mixture, and then we've got some shredded parmesan. Now, the first thing I want to do is get this grill nice and hot for this filet mignon. Got the heat on about medium high, so let that get warm and get those grills nice and hot. And while we're waiting on that, let's go ahead and season up our filet mignon. Now, again, you can use all types of spice blends, paprika, garlic, uh, powder, onion powder, and that sort of thing. But today, all we're going to use is a little salt and a little pepper, all right? So make sure you sprinkle it evenly on there. Pat it down, salt on both sides. Pat that down as well. Then let's get our pepper. We want to make sure that we evenly season the filet on both sides. There we go, just like that, beautiful. Pat that down as well, okay? Now, we're still waiting on our fire to get hot, so while we're doing that, let's go ahead and cut up these asparagus. I'm gonna show you a little trick on how you cut up these asparagus. If you look at these, you see there's a little woodsy part right there. That's a little inedible. We don't want that when we grill our asparagus, okay? So here's a little trick. What you do is you take both ends and you bend it, and wherever it splits, that's the part that you want to be cooking. So then you, we're going to take the rest of these asparagus, bring it over here, and let's line that mark, that point where we broke that first asparagus off. Let's get our knife and just cut it right there. Easy. This we don't want. We're gonna throw that away, put that to the side for now. And now what we wanna do is we wanna season up this asparagus, alright? Got a little olive oil here. Drizzle it on. Make sure it gets all in the nooks and crannies. Then we got our salt again. Make sure you get all salt in each corner of those asparagus. Then we've got our pepper. And when you do that, go ahead and get your hands a little dirty. Make sure it gets all in there. The steak is going to take a little while to cook. The asparagus is not going to take as long. So let's go ahead and put this steak on first, all right? When you're placing the asparagus on the grill, you want to make sure that they're evenly distributed. See how I'm spreading the asparagus out? That's exactly how you want it to look to ensure that each one cooks directly or perfectly. I've got a mixture of water and milk here. Uh, ideally, I would use some sort of broth, vegetable broth or chicken broth. What that does is it enhances the flavor of the grits. However, today we're gonna to take a more simple approach. We're just gonna use water and milk, all right? And actually the milk will make the grits a little more creamy. So here, I have my grits, and I'm gonna use about maybe a cup of grits. Let's go ahead and add it in there. <laughs> you wanna stir it pretty quickly so it doesn't scorch. All right, see how they're getting a little thick that quick? That's exactly what you want. Let's check back with our meat and our asparagus. Looking beautiful, looking beautiful. Right now, 
I'm tossing the asparagus, just making sure that they don't get too overcooked and they're looking pretty good so far. Look at that one right there. See those char marks on there? That's exactly what you want. You don't want them too black. You want them just about that consistency right there. See those grill marks? That's exactly what you want. That right there is exactly what you want. So I had it in one position. I'm going to change it to the other position and let it ride again. Also, we keeping a close eye on these asparagus just to make sure they're not overcooking and they look beautiful. All right, we're gonna let that ride for a few more minutes. Now, let's check on our water and milk mixture for our grits. I've got the fire on high. Basically what you wanna do is you wanna bring this up to a boil. Uh, grits don't take that long to cook. It's a quick process, uh, so you really want to keep an eye on this and make sure it doesn't boil too fast. That way you, you'll end up scorching your grits and that's something you just don't want. All right, look at our filet mignon. It looks absolutely delicious. What I'm going to do now is reposition it to get those grill marks that we want on there. All right, so we've got our grits here with the nice consistency that we wanted. We're gonna add a couple more things here. Okay, so we got our cream cheese in there. We wanna stir that up real good, get that in there, just incorporate it throughout all the grits. Then last but not least, we've got our Parmesan cheese. I'm putting in here about maybe three tablespoons. That should be good. And once that's all in there, you wanna make sure that all that's incorporated into the grits as well. Mmm, I can smell them. They smell delicious. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna plate it up with the grits. That right in the center. Wow, that looks delicious. So when we prepare our filet mignon, you're pretty much expecting uh, a nice pink center, pink or red center, and those grill mark hashes, okay? Um, again, once you cut into that thing, it's gonna melt in your mouth like butter. I mean, a lot of times what I like to do is I top my filet mignon off with some butter. And always remember, when you're preparing the filet mignon, you wanna let it rest for like 10 minutes, okay? Uh, if you cut into a filet mignon directly off that heat, you're gonna lose all that juice and those natural good flavors. What you wanna do is you wanna let it rest, you put a little aluminum foil on top of it, and then let it rest, let all those juices reconstitute right back into that piece of meat. And then when, after that 10 minutes, once you slice it, oh, it's gonna melt like butter in your mouth. You're gonna love it. So the filet mignon, I get asked this question a lot. Why do you buy it? What's so great about it? What's important? Um, the thing is, it's all beef. It's all natural beef. There is no fat. There's very little fat content into it. If you're a beef eater, that's the type of steak that you want. Uh, primarily, I like prime rib. It has more fat in it. But if you're the person, if you're the type of person that enjoys their steak just with natural meat, this is the steak that you want. All right. So this is smelling amazing. You should be here. I wish we had smell of vision. You should smell this. It smells so good. All I used again was salt and pepper. That's all you need. It's going to enhance that flavor. It's going to make that meat intensify with that juicy flavor. It's going to be absolutely delicious. So we already plated our grits. The asparagus look done. Let's take a look at them. If you noticed before when we put this asparagus on there, they were a little stiff. See how that's bouncing? That's exactly what you want. Today we made a filet mignon. It came out nice and tender on the grill. We put those nice grill marks on it and it looks absolutely beautiful. And also, we did our take on some southern style cheesy grits. We added a little Parmesan cheese, a little cream cheese to make it nice and creamy. And to top it off, we made our grilled asparagus. We added a little olive oil, a little salt and pepper, put it on the grill, got those grill marks on there, came out absolutely wonderful. Now it's time to get our grub on. We've got to take a break, we'll be right back.
Churrasco is a Spanish and Portuguese term referring to beef or grilled meat and typically will include skirt steak. Chimichurri is a green sauce used for grilled meat, originally from Argentina. You can usually find this pairing in Brazilian restaurants all over America. Today, I'll share my secret to making this great combination. Enough of this chit chat, let's grub out. When buying a skirt steak, you wanna look for that nice red pinkish color. You don't want your skirt steak to be brown. That's something you wanna avoid. Uh, skirt steak is typically long in length, uh, as opposed to a prime rib, as opposed to a shortcut filet mignon. Uh, however, when looking for a skirt steak, you wanna ensure that it's nice, the texture is nice and fleshy. It's a steak that's going to cook pretty quickly. It won't be on the grill too long, and when you cut into it, it'll have a nice pink center. That's exactly what you want out of your skirt steak. Let's talk about what our ingredients are for our skirt steak. First, I've got this nice skirt steak that I got from the local butcher. I've also got a nice special blend that I'm gonna use on the skirt steak. Also, I have some parsley here that's gonna help make that chimichurri green sauce that I was talking about. Along with the parsley, we have some oregano, we've got some rice vinegar, we've got some garlic, and we also have some olive oil. And right here, we have a nice, sweet Spanish onion. We're gonna slice that up real quick, put a little salt and pepper, a little olive oil on it, and grill it just to accompany the steak. Personally, my opinion on the skirt steak, it's different than your average steakhouse type of steak, meaning uh, filet mignon, or your porterhouse, or your ribeye. Uh, it holds on to flavor excellently. And it also doesn't take long to cook. When I cut into it, it's gonna be very nice and tender and flaky. It's gonna just melt in your mouth. You're gonna absolutely love it. When you put that steak on the grill, you're going to immediately smell that flavor. You're going to immediately smell those spices that complement that steak. It's going to smell absolutely delicious. It's, you're going to just want to take it right off the grill and start eating it. Uh, however, you have to cook it until it's done. So just be prepared to get that nice, fresh, smoky aroma that complements the steak. It's going to be, it's going to smell absolutely great. When it's done, you're gonna get those nice grill marks that you definitely want. You're also gonna be sure that you cut it against the grain. A lot of times, the problem with skirt steak, people cut with the grain and you get a chewy piece of meat that just does not dissolve in your mouth like you would like it to. So be prepared to cut that steak against the grain. The lines go this way, some people cut it this way, no, you want to cut it this way so you have nice thin slices that'll just melt in your mouth. Today, we made a classic skirt steak. 
To go with it, I made a chimichurri sauce and some grilled onions. Remember, when you take your steak off the grill, let it rest for about five to 10 minutes so those juices get right back into that meat. And when you slice it, it'll be absolutely delicious. As the weather warms up, finding creative ways of staying cool outdoors can be a challenge. When grilling, that challenge can be multiplied by 10. Today, our charred vegetable salad will include onions, red bell pepper, eggplant, tomatoes, and we'll top it off with a little bit of basil. Charred vegetables are going to give the vegetable a different type of flavor. It's going to give it a little smoky flavor. It's going to be absolutely delicious. As opposed to boiling your vegetables or sauteing them or steaming them. Uh, and it's also very healthy. Once the vegetables are done, you will definitely see those nice grill marks. And when you taste it, the vegetables are gonna come a little soft, but they're definitely gonna melt in your mouth and you're gonna also taste that smoky flavor. And don't forget that garlic and that vinegar, it's gonna melt in your mouth as well. The worst experience I've had with preparing this dish was letting the vegetables burn. Uh, I was at home, uh, I didn't have a nice grill plate. Uh, there's a grill plate that has holes in it. And what that does is it allows you to put the vegetables in there without them falling through the grill. That's another thing that happened. Uh, I burnt some of the vegetables and they also fell through the grill. So you wanna try and keep your eye on it. That's number one. And then number two, you wanna, if you can, go out and get yourself a nice grill plate so you don't lose any of those vegetables. A lot of times you go out and spend a lot of time getting your vegetables and you do all the work and you have to throw the whole plate away because you burnt everything. Just keep your eyes on those vegetables. I hope you enjoyed my take on charred vegetables. I think you'll enjoy making it for your friends and family. Now get your grub on.